Get your heads checked. Mm. Mm. You big kind of bastard! Where'd you get your treat? Jesus Christ! One gamba to alley. This is the Dave Duke podcast. Gio Gwich Mokara, are you well? Because you're looking well in the Lord's house. May Jesus, Mary, and the wee donkey lay blessings upon your head. Perhaps you're not even into Jesus. Maybe you're more of an Allah brother. Mashallah, brother. Mashallah, sister. Perhaps Buddha is more of your thing. Rub the Buddha's belly to get into heaven. And perhaps you have no God at all. Maybe you're a big dirty pagan. Maybe you believe that as soon as you die, that's it. Game over. Good luck. No more hanging round. Sleepy time. No heaven or hell. Just darkness. Maybe you have a bit of spirituality. Can pagans and atheists be spiritual? And can they be blessed? Can you bless an atheist? Does an atheist get offended when they sneeze and you say, God bless you? Or bless you, for that matter? Could you bless them with a bit of homemade bread and butter? And a nowl bowl of vegetable soup? Could you bless an atheist with that? These are questions that need to be asked and answered on episode 25 of the Dave Duke podcast. I'm that guy. I'm Dave Duke. Before we talk about religion and why this topic came up this week, we need to look at the last seven days. Millions of cocaine seized by Ungarda Shiakana off the coast of Cork slash Wexford, south of the country. Lots of cocaine. People are saying, oh, now hmm, there won't be as much cocaine around the country. Big dint in their arsenal of drugs. It's hardly going to make a fucking bit of difference. There's that many drugs in the country. The ones that are saying, oh, it won't be snowing this Christmas. Really aren't in tune with just how much cocaine is everywhere. 157 million of cocaine to the cartels out of Colombia making the marching powder. It's nothing to them. They're probably like, eh, whatever. It's like a bag of crisps to them. Actually, we'd probably p- place more importance on a bag of cheese and onion tato being robbed from us than they would on 157 million euro worth of cocaine. Anyways, that's street value. Of course the guards have super inflated it. Do you ever see them putting up pictures of their little baggines that they've taken off some poor fella? And they're like, oh, look at all this cocaine that we seized. I ten wee baggies, would ye fuck off? But it's a good day for the, the guards, in fairness to them. They will get a pat on the head, a slap on the back. A fair play to ye lads. But to anyone who thinks that this is going to curtail the drug problem in Ireland by even 1% is very unwise indeed be three pallets being dished out among the law enforcement of this country as long as those apoca clamping fuckers don't get any of it I'll be satisfied more personally what happened in the last few days this sounds like I'm going to tell you something really deep I was in Cashelbar making an absolute fool of myself so Mr Alan Clark had his big news coming soon podcast show in the Royal Theatre in Castlebar. Hell of a show it was. Hell of a show. The guests were in top form, the performers. Then we went and done an after party in Mantra and Castle Bar. And I was lit to the tit. I got these new anti-hangover pills. They don't really market them as that. But that's what they do. They can't really put on the box, Hi, drink loads, this'll save ya. They're a little bit more subtle. They say, have these two pills between 2 and 12 hours before you start drinking that they activate 
and this is very unexact science and maybe you are a scientist and you're listening to me describe this and you're like fucking hell he's butchering this but I didn't do college science did I? no so don't be judging me you take these pills and apparently they stop some of the alcohol getting into your blood stream so a bit like a filter I still had a wild hangover on Sunday. How and ever, I did drink a lot more than I normally would and I had the same hangover. So, did they work? The evidence is inconclusive. But I was jumping and lepping and I got some really lovely messages from people that said, we had a brilliant night. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your enthusiasm. Thank you for your DJ at the after party. And those were really lovely messages to get. So if you were there, I'm glad you had a good time. If you were there and didn't have a good time, it's time to make yourself known. And well done to Alan Clark for the massive success of the Big News Coming Soon podcast show. Uh, he's doing it in Cork and in Letterkenny in the next couple of weeks. And I know you're thinking, oh, Sure, he's a mate and plug, 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 and blah, blah, blah. it's genuinely a show worth going to see. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. That's the best bit of comeuppance and promotion I can give it. No shy talking. Time for religion. Bing bong. People are really sound because they send me stuff. Hi, what do you think of this? Look at this coleslaw ice pop. Stop sending that. I've seen it 50 times. No joke. No exaggeration. I've been tagged in it. I have had it printed out at work and left on my desk. Stop it. People have WhatsApped it to me, Instagrammed it to me, printed it out for me, tagged me in it, Some people have even WhatsApped iRadio when I'm on air to send this to me. Some people have even WhatsApped me when I'm not on air to be like, this is for Dave Duke. Stop it. If you haven't seen this meme, count yourself lucky. It's some sick individual, sick pervert, took coleslaw, put them into... An ice cube tray, you know the lolly shaped ones you can make homemade lollies? And they made, that. I can only describe it this way, they made coleslaw ice pops. Sick fox. I've seen it enough times, thank you. Another thing that someone sent to me this week was a priest doing his sermon. Funny enough, this priest is Father Shane Gallagher and he's from... Well, he's definitely doing the religion in Donegal. Whether he's from Donegal or not, I think he might be. Can't verify that. And they were on a bit of a pilgrimage to Medjugorje, Medjugorje, very holy place. And he was given a sermon, not to just Irish people, but a bit of a congregation. And he went on one. He really did. We listen to podcasts. We listen to human voices. Yeah, you listen to podcasts. Don't be listening to uh, the Lord Jesus Christ in his house now. Be listening to the Dave Duke podcast. We're only getting started, lads. Let me turn it up a bit for you. Anything but listen sorry, to God. Sorry about it being echoey as well. It's very echoey. They, they have no love for professional audio quality in Medjugorje uh, chapels. None at all. <sighs> You meet young fellas, I've seen them here in Medjugorje even, they're going down the main street in their cars, you know, and you're, all you're hearing is... <coughs> He's making a sick beat, by the way. Absolute sick beat. Or <coughs> even, they're going down the main street in their cars, you know, and you're, all you're hearing is... <coughs> That's going on for hours, imagine. Class like beat. the grunting of an animal. By the way, he's absolutely deathly serious in the face when he's given a sermon. There's no such thing as I'm um, having a bit of crack with the young lads listening to mm, mm, mm. I can't even do it as well as he can. He's practiced this. 100% this priest has practiced this. 
Anybody listen to that rubbish in here? Get your heads checked. Once again, deadly serious is Father Shane Galler given this lecture out in Medjugorje. Pretty sure he might be a priest in Rafo. He's a practicing priest in Ireland giving sermons in Medjugorje when they're on the pilgrimage. It's a bit like you going on holidays with your favourite band. Some people go on holidays to Medjugorje with their favourite priest and there's different sermons and there's thinking. Very confusing to this. This is to anyone non-religious, I would imagine. But this was sent to me. What do you think of this, Dave? And it got me thinking about my own religious journey from childhood to present day. We'll come back to Father Shane Geller. I have more from him. And it gets a little bit more angrier. Give you a little bit of background. I am from a very Catholic family. So Catholic, condoms wouldn't have even been known. My grandparents had ten children. Eight still here today. One was a stillbirth and one died in infancy. So I have seven uncles and aunts and then mum is one of eight. My grandmother had three sets of twins. No fucking joke. Three sets of twins. So twins really runs in our family. And then one of those twins now has a set of twins. And I'm going out with a twin. So I practice the good old Catholic method of pulling out our condoms. Because <laughs> fucking hell. I don't want children yet. And I certainly don't want twins now. So that's where I'm coming from. Good Catholic family. Big and bountiful and no prophylactics, and everybody goes to Mass. We're all going to go to Mass. Mass, 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 Mass. Some of my earliest childhood memories are Mass memories. Playing with cars, kept shushed, been told you can't speak in Jesus' house, been brought out to the chapel to clean the benches, And my grandmother would put flowers on the altar, something she does still to this day in her 80th year. A powerful woman who brought us up in religion. And when the time was right and ripe, I became an altar server. And I remember protesting against it. Don't want to be an altar server. I want to be an altar server and that's it. I don't want to. That's it now you're being an altar server. So someone would come round. David's of an age where he can be an altar server. Will he be going forward? Yes, he will. I didn't get a say in it. So I became an altar server. I I see. I don't know if I'm over explaining or under explaining. Because I assume everybody had a similar Catholic upbringing to me. And if they weren't an altar server, then at least they were familiar with the altar serving jobs. So if I'm over-explaining, I do apologise, but it is for those who don't have a clue what it is. Essentially, you're the priest's little wingman. You're helping with the odd jobs. You're ringing the bongs and the bells. Very important job, if you are an altar server, that you get the bells right. We didn't have the ring-a-ding-ding-ding-ding-ding-dings one. We didn't have the little jingly-jingly. We had that... The big fuck off bell. And you bet that at the right time. And it was all very solemn and it was a good occasion. Uh, Your biggest days as an altar server were around Easter. Very important. Very important jobs at Easter. And then weddings. And then your top tier, most solemn job was, of course, funerals. And you'd get paid for that. Very odd practice having to say to uh, an adult who is clearly grieving and in an awful way, very sorry for your loss. Oh, is that, is that, oh, is it? Oh, is that a note? Oh, oh, I can't stop you. Oh, no, I shouldn't. Oh, no. Oh, the note is in my hand. Oh, it's a 20. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Sorry for your loss. 
thanks for the cash. Very odd, 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 odd acceptance. But if you turn down the money from the grieving people, you'd only be insulting them, so you had to take it. But I do remember the odd feeling pulsing through my head of taking money of a grieving family for shaking a bit of incense at their loved one's funeral. When you become a certain age, then you are too old for the priest. Who knew? (laughs) Ah. Who knew you could get too old for the priest? I know, there comes a time of acceptance where it's like, all right, for fuck's sake, you're 21 and you're still altar surfing. Would you get off? Go on. Go way back to college. Don't be coming down every weekend from college to altar surf. Nah, it was more when you're going into secondary school. That's usually the cut-off point. And I started fading away from religion there and then. It was super important that you went to Mass, either a Saturday or a Sunday. There was no debate about it. There was no, oh, we go to Mass this weekend. It was the one certainty in your week. You could go on the dole, you could go on the sick, you could tell work to fuck off, you could mitch from school, but you couldn't get out of Mass every weekend. And when I discovered drink and women and rock and roll, I had no time for Jesus. Jesus, you're only getting in the way of my weekends. Saturday Mass at 7 o'clock. Sure, I have to be in the pub at 6 to meet the mates. Saturday Mass? Okay, can't do that. Sunday? How about 10 o'clock? Too early. 12 o'clock? Gee, Asher. Asher, now, 12 o'clock isn't a bad time for a bit of Mass. Noon of Sunday, but still a bit uh, tough. When you need to go to Mass and you're absolutely dying. All you want to do is get the cure, get the fry, and you're expected to go to Mass. I'd done that for a bit when I started on my drinking journey. And then I broke my grandmother's heart one Sunday. And I still regret it to this day, but I had to go nuclear to stop going to Mass. The head came in round the door. Get up for mass. I slept on. And on the second or third attempt, I said, I'm not going to mass. I don't believe in God. Which was the truth at the time. But sometimes the truth hurts. I told a woman who was a devout Catholic, who signed me up to be an altar server, the woman who cleans the chapel on a rota every month. She has a month, a year, and she cleans it. Spick and span and takes money out of her own pocket and puts flowers on that altar to make it look its best for the congregation and Mary and Jesus and Joseph and all of them. Even the wee donkey. This is a woman who is a Eucharistic minister, so she gives out the bread the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. This woman has done it all in religion except become a priest because Catholicism says women can't be priests. Very devout Christian and Catholic. I told this woman I didn't believe in God. Very insulting, very hurtful. 50% of me regrets saying that. The other 50% of me says I was only telling the truth at the time. I fucking didn't believe in God. I didn't want to go to Mass. Wasn't. (laughs) No was not being taken as a correct answer. And I went nuclear. And I stopped being asked to go to Mass. After that moment. And my grandparents would go alone. And for years, I would bring them to Mass if they were stuck for a lift when my grandfather was no longer comfortable doing the driving. 
I would bring them to Mass and I would sit outside and I'd pick them up. I'd go to funerals, I'd go to weddings, I'd go to christenings. No problem. I even went to a a few Christmas Masses. Christmas Eve. And even then, I moved away from them. And then it was strictly funerals, christenings, communions, confirmations. And that's the way it has been for years. Wouldn't go into a chapel, wouldn't go to a graveyard. Me and religion only seen each other a few times a year. And even then, there was no Hail Marys or Our Fathers. Then, Granda died suddenly in March 2021. And religion came back into my life in a huge way. It's always the way, isn't it? A true test of your atheism or your unbelief in God is when shit hits the fan. And shit really did hit the fan. Then. I don't know if anyone has died belonging to you. Or you've been heavily involved with a wake house and a funeral. But if you're from a Catholic family, the first person you ring after the ambulance and the emergency services and the immediate family is the priest. And we have a lovely priest in my parish. His name is Father Fair, a gentleman. And he comes in and he gives Granda the last rites. He's laid out on the kitchen floor. Right beside the seat, his seat that he sat at for years. And you're grasping at straws. Your world is falling apart before you. You're seeing people you've known all your life, your closest family members, cry for the very first time. It's a harrowing experience. And there's a lot of rosaries. Our Father, we're in heaven, hallowed be the name of the King of God, the world, but on earth is in heaven. Give us our element. Jesus Christ Almighty, you couldn't move for fucking rosaries for the next three days. There wouldn't be one part of silence at the wake and someone would pipe up, we'll do a decade of the rosary. Ring around a rosary. The muttering ones are my favourite. Are you saying our father or are you just fucking pretending to be a mouse? What is that? Speak up, young fellow. Our father, what in heaven, hallowed be the name. Rosaries to beat the band. Prayers and and uh, poems I'd never heard before in my life. But I got sucked in a wee bit by religion. Maybe for a comfort factor. Sure it was. Of course it was. And that's where I sit now. It's two and a half years since Granda has died. I, I'm i still greatly affected by it. I am not the same person as I was beforehand. I have a far greater empathy for grief. Manny's a funeral or wake house I've attended over the years. I've got in, shook someone's hand, said sorry for your loss, and never knew what it meant until it happened to me and my immediate family. And that's how religion creeped back into my life. Where am I now? 
I still don't go to mass. I still not can call myself a practicing Catholic. Right here is a bottle of holy water. I will bless myself on occasion. I will say a prayer on occasion. I visit the graves frequently. I will light a candle in a chapel frequently. I find great comfort in a chapel. There's something beautiful about the silence and how solemn it is. It actually feels like a safe space in a quiet chapel. And I'm conflicted about where I sit with religion. I'm not your ideal Catholic, am I? I take the piss out of the Catholic Church quite a bit and I've got into plenty of trouble about it. Most of the complaints have actually been me ripping the piss on Catholicism. You wouldn't say that about the Muslims or the gays, would you? No, I wouldn't. Because they haven't been as big a part of my life as Catholicism has. I have a little bit more experience with it. I'm a little bit more sympathetic towards people who are very religious. But I'm also very respectful of people who have no religion at all. It intrigues me, their thoughts. This is a conversation I've had with nobody else except you. I might even chance a bit of a midnight mass this year. Do I believe in heaven? Not really. But I want to believe in it for those who deserve to get there. To think about my grandfather who died at the end of March 2021 how devoted he was to his faith, to his wife, to us, how much of a gentleman he was, and to think that there'd be no heaven for him was too hard and is still too hard to comprehend. On the night before he died, remember we're still in lockdown in March 2021, One of his last acts in the house was to watch Mass live from Knock on RTE. And he didn't sit down like he was watching a football match. He stood up, he kneeled, he prayed as if he was in his own chapel. And to think there'd be no Heaven for a man like that. is something I personally can't bear thinking. I'd happily take no heaven for myself. If there was one for the people you loved. On the other hand, Father Shane Galler is a bit of a priest who I wouldn't get on with. (laughs) Bit of an antichrist. I think just because you go to Mass and you're sitting up the front doesn't mean you're a good person or a good fucking Christian. Some of the people who I have witnessed sitting at the front of a chapel all holy and mightier than thou are the biggest cons going, whereas there are many more person who is down the back, sitting with their back to the altar, who's a far better person than those right up the top. Maybe you know what I'm getting at. 
Father Shane Galler doesn't even want us having a chat at Mass. And he's dying about you. But what do people do when they come in here? They chat to each other. They chat to each other. You're dying for a chat. Even when they have a sign of peace. Stop chatting during the sign of peace. Just I should go back. Because the point he's making. Jesus is dying for you. And all you're dying for is to have a chat. Good man, Father Shane. Let's go again. He's talking about the tabernacle as well. He's great crack in fairness. I'd go to one of his sermons and I would piss my whole laughing. We no longer listen to God or make silence in the church. This place, this beautiful church, is a place of love. It's a place of encounter with Jesus. He's there in the tabernacle. He's mad about you. I remember my mother telling me, she said, Jesus is in there. I remember when I was six. She said, Jesus is in that gold box. I was looking and I was thinking, he couldn't get his big toe into that. But he's there. He's there. Jesus. He's dying about you. Dying. But what do people do when they come in here? They chat to each other. They chat to each other. You're dying for a chat. Even when they have a sign of peace. Stop chatting during the sign of peace. Just give the sign of peace. Stop chatting and get on with it. We, we're yapping morning, and noon and night. And we're, we're, we're getting more and more and happier. We grumble. And if the priest tells us the truth in this place of joyful encounter and love... We send emails to the bishop. We're not happy. <laughs> we complain to the radio stations. Father X and Father Y. Father Shane Gallagher gone on a fucking mad one. He's some priest. I think it might be Rafo that he does his bit of religion. I might travel to Rafo in County Donegal. It'd be far cheaper than getting a ticket to Tommy Tiernan. And you know what? I might laugh as much at the sermon he goes on with. If you want to watch it, I will put it in the link of this that you can go and watch it immediately. Maybe you fully agree with them. Learning to listen to God, Father Shane Galler. I'd say me and Shane would have some argy bargy if we got talking about religion and Catholicism. I think after the emotionally charged podcast that we've had, that we won't do a wheel of topics or a gospel. That we'll leave it at this for now. And the may God, if one does exist, bless you. Take it, Savage Andy.